My name is Dave Wilhelm. I am a professor in business administration at Wake Technical Community College in Raleigh, North Carolina. I teach mostly courses in business management and entrepreneurship. I teach those classes in both a seated and an online format. This video is one in a series where I am trying to make sure that my online students uh, get enough information in some areas so that they're comfortable with the material and not insignificantly so that I have a clear conscience when I give them homework on these topics. This is about elasticity. Uh, I would call it consumer sensitivity to price changes. The economists got there first. They call it elasticity. More precisely, price elasticity of demand. So we'll go with their terminology. We will cover a bit on the demand curve. An explanation of change and percent change. Delta is a symbol for change, and of course percent is the symbol for percent. And a couple exercises for you. Then a couple examples of elasticity, and a couple more exercises for you. Finally, a couple comments. An explanation of a economist idiosyncrasy in calculating percent change. And then finally, at the very end, two problems for you as a sort of review. This is a demand curve. There are three elements that economists like to look at. One is supply, one is demand, one is price. And they're all mixed together, and economists come out with theory. I'm a simple business person. I don't know about that. But what I do know is that if there's something I buy and the price goes up, I'm less likely to buy it, or more likely to buy a lesser quantity. If the price goes down, I'm more likely to buy it, and perhaps prone to buy more of it. There is something called a supply curve, which shows how suppliers react to changes in price. This is a demand curve. This is how you and I react to changes in price. In particular, if it's a very, very high price up on this end of the curve, maybe our quantity that we will buy is, is around here. So high price, low quantity. On the other hand, if the price is low or goes down, we will either buy more or increase what we buy. So over there on the vertical axis is the price. Here on the horizontal axis is the quantity. And although in a macroeconomic sense, price, quantity, demand, supply, all these go together. As far as we're concerned, price has an effect on the quantity we consumers are interested in purchasing. Here is my demand for two liter sodas. I drink way too much of it. I confess, my wife reminds me of that often. But I thought about it and picked a couple points. If the lowest price I can find, a two liter bottle of Diet Coke or Diet Cherry Pepsi is a buck and a half. I will just um, forget about it. I will drink iced tea, water, something else. So my highest price point I'll actually purchase some is a buck and a quarter. And that week I'll just drink one two liter bottle of Diet Soda. On the other hand, if it's just 25 cents lower, I'll purchase five two-liter bottles and drink them. If the price goes down to less than a dollar somewhere in this area, uh, I, I can only drink six a week. 
So that is my demand curve for two liter sodas. Price over there ranges from 50 cents to a buck and a half. My quantity from zero up to six, uh, and that's my demand. This is elastic demand. It means I'm very price sensitive. If the price is too high, forget about it entirely. The price is nice and low. Yahoo! Uh, let, let's go celebrate with the Diet Cherry Pepsi and a big bag of popcorn. On the other hand, my need for gas is pretty stable. I go back and forth to Wake Tech to teach there. I run a few errands. I pick up my grandsons. I take them a few places. But it doesn't matter what the price is. If the price of gas is a dollar or five dollars, I pretty much need that gasoline. So if gas is five dollars a gallon, I'll get ten gallons of gas that week. If gas is one dollar a gallon, well, maybe I'll get 11 gallons that week. But this is my example of inelastic demand, gasoline. What's the difference? If you look at my elastic demand for soda, it's not a necessity. There are lots of substitutes. Uh, and in fact, water, iced tea, probably half dozen other things, grape juice, uh, cherry juice, uh, lots of substitutes, and it's not necessary. That's elastic demand, very price sensitive. The other hand, this elastic demand, I really need that gas to maintain my lifestyle, uh, and my it's not so much a lifestyle as I need gas to get a job, to buy food, transport grandchildren around. So very few substitutes. Okay, very few reasonable substitutes. I could take public transportation. I could ride a bicycle. I could walk. I could get rides with friends. I could buy a 250C Vespa motor scooter, uh, except my wife and I have already talked about that. That's not in the game. So inelastic demand, necessary, and few substitutes. Difference and percent difference. And we're going to review this because it's important in calculating elasticity. If you start at 200 and go to 230, the change is, let me see, 30. 5 to 15, the change is 10. 15 to 5, the change is minus 10. 30, 10, and minus 10. But what we need for elasticity calculations is percent changes. Percent change can be either the finish minus the start, finish minus the start, divided by the start, or change the terminology, n minus beginning, divided by the beginning. They're the same. It's just what we call them. In this case, the percent change, 30 divided by 200, that's either 0.15 or 15%, depending on which way you like to express it. This change is 10, this percent change is 10 divided by 5, or 2, or 200 percent. This change is minus 10 divided by 15, which is about 0.67, or 67 percent. In, in fact, it's minus 67 percent. And those numbers are here. And yeah, I got them right. Here's an exercise for you. Please calculate the change and the percent change. If you wish, pause the video, jot the numbers down, do the calculations, 
and then restart the video and see how you did. I want to re repause it again to, to check your numbers. If you don't want to do that, just hang on. Here we go. There are the deltas. No surprises. 4, 2, minus 2, 3, minus 3, 1,000, minus 500, plus 500. The percent changes are there. In percent, 20, 50, minus 33, 20, minus 20, 67, 50, minus 50 actually, uh, and 100 percent. Change or delta, percent change or percent delta. Finally, here's what we promised to talk about, elasticity. And the elasticity we're talking about is price elasticity of demand. I would call it consumer price sensitivity. So price elasticity of demand, or elasticity, is simply equal to the percent change in demand divided by the percent change in price. And what we're looking for is if I change my price either up or down, what are my customers going to do? That's very important. Uh, simply terminology, well, shorter, percent delta D, percent change in demand, divided by percent delta P, percent change in price. Generally, I calculate the percent change in price first because that's what's driving the process, but you have to remember that the percent change in price is in the denominator. denominator denominator and the percent change in demand is in the numerator. Just looking at them, if the percent change in demand is greater than the percent change in price, we call that elastic. Think of a, a rubber band. It changes a lot when you pull it if it's an elastic band. On the other hand, if the percent change in demand is less than the percent change in price, we call it inelastic. The, the elastic is my two liter bottles of diet soda. The inelastic is my gas. Or if you like math, I do like math, by the way, and you can actually run out the calculation and if the elasticity is greater than one, we call it elastic. If the price elasticity of demand is less than one, we call it inelastic. And what that's really telling us is the change in demand, percent change in demand, is either going to be less or more than the percent change in price. Here's an example. The price goes from $50 to $30. Must be one of those Black Friday or Cyber Monday sales. Demand goes up from $15,000 to $18,000. Hmm. Calculate the percent change in price. $30 minus $50 divided by $50 equals more math. Minus 40%. So the price has gone down 40%. Calculating the percent change in demand, it went up because the price went down. And that went up by 20%. Hmm. So just intuitively, the percent change in demand, 20%, is less than the absolute value of the percent change in price. So these customers are not particularly price sensitive. If you got to do the math, 20% percent change in demand divided by the percent change in price minus 0 0.50 or minus 50%, that says it's inelastic. That means the demand is not moving as much as the price did on a percentage basis. 
Okay, think about it for a second. This elasticity value is negative. Are they always negative? Pretty much. Why are price elasticity of demands always negative? Strictly speaking, almost always, but close enough. Okay, you've had your chance. Basically, because when price goes up, demand goes down. When price goes down, demand goes up. And that's shown by this demand curve right here. So that if the change in price is positive, the change in demand is negative, the ratio is going to be negative, and if it's the other way, the ratio is still going to be negative. That's why we don't really worry about the negative sign in the calculations. There is an exception called Giffen goods. We're not going to talk about them here. But if you really want to get your economics instructor off on a tangent, ask them about Giffen goods. Giffen goods are a good that where when the price of the Giffen good increases, the demand for the Giffen good increases. Don't let your economics instructor slough this one off. Make sure they give you a good answer. Okay, here's your exercise. Actually, you've got two of them. So exercise one, the price goes from $5 to $4. So we we'll see prices going down. The demand goes from 10,000 units to 11,000 units. Is it elastic or inelastic? And what's the value of the price elasticity of demand? You can do the pause the video thing if you want, or you can just watch. So percent change in price, do the math, 4 minus 5 divided by 5, or minus 20%. So price reduction, excuse me, of 20%. As a result, the demand has changed. The percent change in demand, 11 minus 10 divided by 10, or 10%, plus 10%. Price went down 20%, demand went up 10%. Um, intuitively, demand changed less than price on a percentage basis, so it's inelastic. Or price insensitive. If you want to do the math, demand plus 10%, price minus 20%, that's less than one, so we call it inelastic. Here's your other exercise. Just to be nice, the price change is the same. Only this time, the demand goes from 10,000 units 15,000 units. Once again, the percent change in price is minus 20%, but this time the percent change in demand is 50%. Okay, intuitively, 50 is greater than 20, so this is an elastic, uh, elastic elasticity. Uh, for this product, people are price sensitive, and if you do the math, the elasticity is, elasticity is equal to minus two and a half, greater than one, ignoring the minus sign, so elastic. Couple comments. The elasticity analysis is incremental. Uh, it's making small changes in price that are going to result in small changes in demand. Uh, you start making 50% changes, you're getting into a totally nonlinear area. So keep it incremental. Maybe we can uh, count on it uh, holding uh, 
uh, but it is incremental analysis. There's something called cross-elasticity of demand. And this is the change in our product as a result of a change in our competitor's product. So cross-elasticity of demand. And the economists probably have all sorts of other uh, elasticity measures. We'll, we'll just stick to price elasticity of demand. This has all been very interesting. At least it has been to me. So what? As a small business person, I read my trade journals, I go to seminars, and I have an idea of what the elasticity of my product is. What good is it? Well, if my consumers are price sensitive, that means elasticity is greater than one, so that if I lower my price a little bit, I can expect a higher percent percentage increase in demand. In other words, my revenue will go up. Whether my profit will also go up, that's a you know, little, little more analysis farther down the line. But if I have a less elastic demand, I can pretty much come that if I incrementally decrease my price, the demand will go up as a higher percentage. If, so if they're price sensitive, I might seriously uh, consider lowering my price. If they're not price sensitive, if they're price insensitive, let's see, if I raise my price by some percentage, a smaller percentage of people, uh, or the, the, the demand will increase by, will decrease by a smaller percentage. So once again, I can increase my revenue that way. In this case, that would probably increase my profit as well. So price sensitive uh, or elastic, might want to lower the price. Price insensitive might want to raise the price. Now there's more than price involved, of course. Um, if your customers are used to this price and you lower it a bit, there may be a, a problem from another side. But that's what you can do with your knowledge of the elasticity of your product. Last bit of information, and this has to do with the economists' idiosyncrasies. When we calculate our percent changes going from 4 to 6 and 6 to 4, the change was 2 and minus 2, but the percent changes were plus 50 and minus 33. And economists don't like this because if you're going back and forth, it tends to skew uh, the information and look like you're really going more in one direction than the other. So what they do, instead of calculating the percent change by end minus beginning divided by the beginning value, they go end minus beginning divided by the average of the ending and beginning values, end plus beginning divided by two. Why? Well, much as I like to make fun of economists, it does actually make a bit of sense because when we do the calculations, the four to six is now divided by five, two divided by five is 0.4 or plus 40%. And if you go the other way, it's also going to be 40%, although minus 40%. So if you add up a bunch of changes, they're going to come out zero uh, which really makes more sense if you go from 4 to 6 and 6 to 4. So, uh, economists do, do do some things well. Okay, here's your quiz. The one on the left, price, quantity, demand curve, is uh, the one on the left, elastic or inelastic? Okay, don't just guess, think it through. Let me see. The price is changing. 
quite a bit. Quantity is not changing. That means those folks are not price sensitive, so it's inelastic. Sure enough. In the other case, the price is not changing much, but the quantity is zipping all over the place. So these folks, they're, they're pretty sensitive to price. So the left-hand curve line is pretty much by gasoline. Uh, it's inelastic. Customers are not price sensitive because they need the stuff. There are a few reasonable substitutes. Whereas over here, it's my two liters of diet soda, which are really not a life necessity. Uh, so uh, people are price sensitive. It's not needed. Lots of substitutes. My name is Dave Wilhelm. I hope this bit of information about elasticity has been useful and perhaps a little bit interesting. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to send me an email.